in this part we'll be talking about the reproductive system in earthworm earthworms are hermaphrodite that means one worm has both male and female reproductive organs so there are ovaries also and testes also in the same worm such worms or such organisms are known as hermaphrodite but they show cross fertilization that process we'll discuss little later but before that we need to understand the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system so first we'll talk about the male reproductive system male reproductive system is made up of two pairs of testes which are located in the 10th and the 11th segments in 10th and 11th segments and as we are starting from 10th 11th segments and we have already discussed that the male genital pores are in the 18th segment we will start drawing from the 9th segment itself so if we start drawing this i'm going to just draw those segments which are important so here this is the 9th segment 10th 11th and then we'll continue further so this one is 9th 10th and 11th we are saying that the testes are present in 10th and 11th segments these testes are attached to the septum with the help of a stalk and then there are some finger like structures and this is going to be the other one again finger like structure this is one pair which is in the 10th segment the second pair is again has a, uh, having a stalk and the finger like structures here also the stalk and the finger like structures so the testes are present in 10th and 11th segment but they are attached to the septum which is between 9th and 10th and the septum which, which is between 10th and 11th segments each testes is located in a large a fluid filled sac so let us draw this sac like structure in which these testes are located so here also there is a sac like structure so let us label this this is the testes and this is known as or these two are called testicular sacs and these sacs are filled with fluid there are glands these glands are known as seminal vesicles seminal vesicles are also two pairs and they are present in 11th and 12th segments in 11th and 12th same so for the 10th segment the seminal vesicle is in the 11th and for 11th segment it is in the 12th so this is the 12th segment the glands are circular large glands so for 10th segment the gland is here for this segment the gland is here and for the 11th segment the glands are located here and as we can see there is a difference in the size also the upper ones are smaller and the lower ones are bigger that means the ones which are in the 12th segment are comparatively bigger and this is the 12th segment that we have shown in each testicular sac there is a funnel which is going to collect the male gametes or the sperms so from here the sperms would be collected so i'm drawing a funnel like structure here this is the funnel and the lining or the rim is made up of ciliated epithelium from this funnel there is a tube which is going to arise same thing is going to happen here there is a funnel 
again cilia at the opening and this funnel is again going to lead into a tube similarly there would be funnel in this testicular sac also which would be collecting the sperms from these testes so here let us draw this funnel with ciliated opening and it goes or it opens into a tube like structure now from the testes the sperms are going to come or will be collected by this funnel the funnel is known as testicular funnel and the sperms will be collected from this uh, the sperms from this testes would be collected by this funnel and from the funnel there would be a tube which would be taking the sperms to this gland and there would be a duct which is going to go like this so this is the duct of the upper funnel and as we can see there is a connection between the seminal vesicle and the funnel so what happens is the sperms are collected by the funnel they go to the seminal vesicles here maturation takes place and then they would come out through this tube this tube is vas deferens so we'll have to show this in all the parts so from here also the tube is going to arise this tube would have one connection going into this duct and the duct would come like this let us talk about this funnel this funnel will also have a duct and a tube which is going to this seminal vesicle similarly a duct going here and a duct coming down that means from every testis the sperms would be collected by these funnels they would be first carried to the seminal vesicles where maturation would take place this is the site where the sperms mature and then they would be conducted through these tubes so these tubes are the vas difference so there's paired structures so the paired tubes which are coming now i'm going to skip certain segments here and we'll straight away draw segments which are from 16 to 20 this is 16 17 18 19 and 20 from 16th to 20th or 17th to 21st there are again some glands which are present on the side these are long lobulated glands and they are called prostate glands so the next gland which is here is a pair of prostate glands pair one pair and they are in segments 16th to 20th or 17th to 21st now these ducts they reach up to this and a duct from the prostate joins this tube so there is a duct which is bringing the secretion from it has to come up to 18th segment and in 18th segment a duct from the prostate would join and now this opens out in the form of the male genital pore so there would be one genital pore opening here and let us draw these ducts which are going to be coming up till here so these openings which are seen 
in the 18th segment let us draw it here in the 18th segment these two openings are male genital pores male genital pores open in the 18th segment in the 17th and 19th there are some accessory glands on the sides there are accessory glands 17th and 19th these accessory glands they open out through many ducts and it is seen in the form of genital papillae if you remember when we made the external structure we said in 18th segment this is the male genital pore and in 17th and 19th there are these genital papillae the genital papillae actually have the openings of these accessory glands accessory glands their secretion would help the two worms to hold each other during copulation so what is visible to us are the paired openings of the male genital pore and the papillae these papillae are bulgy structures where there are many fine ducts of these accessory glands opening and during copulation they would release the secretion which would become little hard and would help the two worms to hold each other so male reproductive system comprises of the main uh, organ that is the testis which would produce the sperms maturation is going to take place in the seminal vesicle so sperms first would go to seminal vesicles then they would be collected by a duct or a tube which is called vas deferens a duct from prostate would join that and these would open in the 18th segment in the form of the paired openings or genital pores so this is how the male reproductive system is and we have just drawn those segments where the structures are present as we said in the beginning that the worm is hermaphrodite that means in the same worm we would find the male reproductive system as well as the female reproductive system but for understanding purpose we are drawing them separately but in the worm both the systems would be present so in the next part we'll draw female